Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to take a quick look at the Life Pro Oliva Red Red Light Therapy Belt, and we're going to compare it to the Motu Red Light Therapy Belt. Now, both of these are on Amazon. The Life Pro is on Amazon for $189 currently, and the Motu is about $50 currently. So we're going to do the usual thing, check intensity, wavelengths, and EMFs, and then give you some tips on how to reduce the EMFs at the end. Okay, we have them both unboxed. Here's the Motu. It's got like a little pocket, I think, to put in an optional battery that's not included. And then we've got Life Pro, very similar blue trim, and another pocket uh, to put in some sort of battery. Um, but they don't come with the batteries. You might be able to use um, the adapter that comes with it. It's a USB adapter, so you could use like a five volt uh, phone charging battery bank and and run it off. And both of them come, both of them come with the adapter. So then both of them have a 12 volt power adapter, so that way you can just plug them straight into the wall. And then they both have a nearly identical little uh, controller gadget here that I think you can kind of choose brightness and timing. So we've got them both set up, and we can see they're the same treatment area, the same number of LEDs, um, just very minor differences between the two. The Life Pro has kind of a different uh, rounded shape here. The, the Motu is more kind of just this, you know, kind of rectangular. Life Pro does have different modes. You can control um, some pulsing, and you can control separate 660 red or the 850 near infrared and the Motu you can only control all of them together and there's no pulsing uh, but it does adjust you can adjust the brightness or the intensity now let's just turn them both on to full blast so this is the Motu and it starts out at low so we bump it up to L4 and that's the highest brightness and then the same thing with the Life Pro we turn it on it says all now, um, and then you can cycle through 660, 850, so we're going to do all. And then if you press it again, that's the 10 hertz flicker. Um, but we're going to do all. We've got all wavelengths, and then we're going to do... Is it the top right? Oh, here we go. So now we got the max brightness is L4. So we've got them both with all their LEDs on at the max brightness. And I guess the only, there's a difference here is that the Motu is just using kind of single chip. Um, there's actually three chips in each of these LEDs, but all three chips are gonna be red, and then all three chips are gonna be near infrared. This one, it looks like they're integrating both the red and near infrared together in the same chip. So you get a little bit more of a, you know, even blend and here you kind of get, you know, one row of infrared and one row of red. You know, I don't know how much of a difference that makes, but some people might care about that too. And I did notice, I don't know if you can pick it up, but uh, a little bit of a haziness on the um, plastic sheet for the Life Pro. It's been kind of sitting around in my office for a couple of weeks for me to do this review, so I don't know what the haziness came from. And then while we have them both at max power settings, we'll do a quick check of the consumed power. Sometimes that's a good way to do a quick comparison of what's the total output and what's the actual kind of power of the unit. Because uh, if you just trust the rated watts, you know, sometimes you get very easily misled. So it's good to just kind of check the actual watts. It's a cheap unit. You can get a kilowatt meter and use it around your home, use it for your appliances and check your uh, power levels of your red light therapy devices too. Okay, so we've got both our kilowatts set up here. The Motu is on the right, it's about 16 watts. And the Life Pro is on the left, it's about 17 watts. So you get one more watt out of, out of the Life Pro. Okay, but let's check the intensity anyway. And this is kind of a tricky setup because we want to put the sensor right over one of the diodes. So, you know, it depends how well you position it, but I got 31 on the Motu on the red, and we've got a peak of 645, so it doesn't look like it quite hits that 660 mark. Now let's check the infrared on the Motu. Okay. 
Okay, so after a couple different tests, we get a peak around 20 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Uh, so again, you know, these are decent uh, intensity numbers. And we verify we've got 853 as the peak, so so that's pretty good. Um, so, you know, we're a little bit off on the red. That's a little odd. Let's check again. Yeah, so the red's still about 643, uh, 644 almost. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, so the mole through is a little bit off, uh, but, you know, it's got decent power of both red and near-infrared. So again, you know, a little bit off on the, the wavelengths. Okay, now let's check the light pro. Okay, so the life pro, you know, and it's got the combined wavelengths here. And this one, the, the red does look deeper, like visually by my eye. And it looks like the peak is closer to 656. So actually, yeah, it looks like it's pretty close to 660. So I'd say the life pro is, is you know, closer to 660. And then the peak for near infrared is 855. So this one hits you know, the wavelength's just right. And then the intensity is pretty up there. So it's 80 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So that's right over the LED. So again, more power's not better. Maybe that's why, you know, it might be better to use a pulse mode or use one of the lower power modes. Um, make sure it doesn't heat up too much and you don't need too much intensity. Um, but you know, you got that range to kind of play around with. Okay, so the last thing is uh, we can check some of the EMFs. Um, you know, we don't expect much of a milligauss, the magnetic field, because um, it's pretty low power and there's no fans, no fancy electronics. Um, so we really don't see any change. So even right up on it is less than half of a milligauss. So, you know, that's practically nothing. That's kind of the background in my environment here. So yeah, less than half of a milligauss for both. So the magnetic field's not a problem like it is, you know, with big panels that have lots of fans and internal drivers and things like that and it's usually more of an electric field is a concern with uh, led mats that are plugged into the wall especially if they only have two prong adapters it's a good chance that there's a high risk it's going to be higher emf on the electric field side and so we can see the mothu really jumps up there almost a thousand so, you know, that's where, you know, plugging it into the battery, the five volt battery adapter that can help reduce the EMFs because the five volt battery is DC. And the same thing here, Life Pro, very high EMF with the standard uh, outlet that they include the two prong adapter there. So then there's three hacks you can do to reduce the EMFs on these. The first I mentioned is use a five volt battery bank that you use to charge your cell phone. I don't have one of those here, but I'm confident it works. It's, I've, I've used it a number of times. And then the other hack is that knowing that both of these are a 12 volt system, we can either use a low EMF 12 volt adapter, which is what I use for a lot of my products. And you can get a similar one from Jamico, or you can get a 12 volt battery if you want to be um, hands free and, and walking around and it's you know more of a higher powered source that that's a direct 12 volt so that way it's simpler to set up okay now that we've got the battery powering the mothu and the other one's got the low emf adapter we can see a much lower emf on the electric fields so that's good you know it's a great hack to use use a battery and then the same thing with the low emf adapter it's even lower, maybe even because it's, it's still connected to a ground, and that's what this ground reference is for. And so you can get even lower when plugged into the wall with a grounded adapter, which a lot of people uh, you know, might blow some minds. Um, but that's it. That's our hack if you want to reduce EMFs on some low-cost LED pads. Both of them seem decent enough to work for some benefits. The Life Pro has a couple extra upgrades like controlling red and near infrared separately and getting the pulse. Uh, but both of them, you know, should be able to help with general wellness and the prices keep getting lower and lower. And hopefully we can encourage manufacturers to include low EMF adapters with their devices like we try to do. So, you know, and that's the thing is that they can be cheap. And, you know, eventually they'll be really good quality and you can have a good time with them. But that's it. Thanks for tuning in.